Hello and welcome to another episode of Herbal History. In this episode, we will discuss the history and application of Griffonia simplicifolia and its active ingredient, 5-HTP. In previous episodes, and possibly in future episodes, I would recommend using these only for minor aches and pains, nothing serious, and asking the doctor first. For this one, I would say, do not use this one, unless directed by a doctor, period. You'll see that there is nasty side effects to this medication, which we'll go over in this episode. In this episode, we will discuss the history of this plant and its use in different medications from a historical standpoint, the effect of this plant on rats' eating behaviors, as well as their mating behaviors. So strap right in, it's going to be an interesting ride. Griffonia simplicifolia, which for convenience sake will be known as Griffonia only, is an African shrub that often grows in mounds that are occupied by termites, as well as coast plains and forest zones. It's an evergreen plant that grows to a height of 2 meters with greenish flowers followed by black 2 inch pods with seeds in them. In the traditional medicines of Ghana, the Ivory Coast, and Togo, different parts of the plant are used for different treatments for wounds, kidney disease associated with diabetes, and stomach problems. It was also used as an aphrodisiac. The seeds, roots, and leaves were used for different purposes to that end. The seeds are high in 5-HTP, a chemical used for over 30 years that was found to be effective treatment for depression, fibromyalgia, insomnia, and eating disorders. But there's limited evidence that this plant produces the desired effects. When taken appropriately, this medication can be used safely for up to a year when taking 400 milligrams daily. But some have developed a condition called EMS, which causes muscle tenderness or myalgia of some sort, as well as blood abnormalities. There will be further side effects covered in the next couple parts. Next, we'll talk about the effects on food intake in rats. In rats, they found that those that are fed dosages of 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, as well as 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, had a reduction in body weight and a reduction in food intake, but the lowest dose given, 25 milligrams per kilogram, did not affect this portion of rat physiology. The use of this medication seems to have also caused a reduction in the desire to mate within rat populations. It also impaired the male rat's ability to get it up, so to speak, although there seemed to be little in the way of permanent side effects in terms of sexual dysfunction. Now on to some drug interaction. If you're taking 5-HTP alongside a antidepressant, you may get too much serotonin in your brain which can cause many different problems due to the fact that both antidepressants and 5-HTP work by increasing the amounts of serotonin in one way or another. If you're taking medicine for Parkinson's, then the interaction can cause an increased speech rate heavy amounts of anxiety and aggressiveness. If you're taking this with cough medication, then you can get shivering, heart problems, and anxiety. If you're taking this with an opioid pain medication, then you'll also have heart problems, shivering, and anxiety. The long and the short of it is this medication is quite dangerous, and there seems to be limited information on suitability for people and its effectiveness on treating the illnesses that it claims to treat. So if you suffer from one of the disorders or diseases that it is supposed to treat, try everything else first and keep that as a last resort. Again, not a doctor. Talk to your doctor about this stuff. But from a personal angle, this drug is a hard no from me. Now these sources I've actually used in a university essay for one of my courses. The essay itself was on diabetic plants 
or plants that help with diabetes. This was one of the plants I considered using as one of the plants I would cover, due to its possibility of changing the mental habits that cause overeating, but found it wanting with all the other nasty side effects that it comes with. So in the end of the day, if you want to stop overeating, it takes a lot of self-control, and there are no silver bullets. Thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next round. See ya!